Hello, my name is Jalal Kazanpur. I'm an assistant professor at DTU at uh, Energy Analytics and Market Groups of Center for uh, Electric and Energy. And today I would like to talk about the energy procurement strategy for a large consumer. Well, when we talk about the large consumer, large uh, uh, electricity consumer, we are talking about a consumer with comparatively high uh, consumption level. And we assume that this large consumer may own a large number of the loads. And these loads of the large consumer might be distributed throughout the transmission uh, system. So if you would like to uh, have more some examples of large consumers, some potential large consumers in power systems, it could be, for example, the aluminum, steel uh, uh, production plants, it could be uh, motor vehicle manufacturing companies, or it could be anything, any, any kind of the large consumers that may exist in uh, power systems. So today we would like to know how these large consumers can participate in electricity markets and what's the best for them, the, pr the best procurement strategy for them to buy their electricity needs from the uh, electricity markets, okay? Well, about the large consumers, uh, what do you think their objectives are? So, it depends if the large consumer is counted as elastic load or inelastic load. When we talk about the elastic load, it means that the large consumer is sensitive to price. It means that uh, he would like uh, he has some utility prices and as far as the electricity price is lower than its utility price, then uh, the large consumer likes to buy electricity, otherwise no. But in case of inelastic load, it means that uh, it's totally uh, insensitive to electricity price and it would like to buy electricity at any price, okay? So in the case of elastic large consumers, we can say that its objective is utility maximization. So it would like to buy electricity to maximize kind of its benefit, its benefit out of electricity. But if we assume that the large consumer is inelastic, so it means that, he, I mean, the large consumer buys the electricity at any price, but its own, I mean, objective is just a cost uh, minimization, okay? So in this lecture, uh, the type of the large consumer we're gonna consume, we're gonna assume is uh, elastic large consumer whose objective function is utility maximization, okay? Well, so as I uh, mentioned before, uh, we like to develop uh, a procurement strategy tool for this large consumer whose load is elastic to price, okay? We have one assumption and that assumption is that this large consumer is price taker. So when we say that a participant in power system, in power market is a price taker, it means that it's a small, it's comparatively low, I mean, a small uh, participant, and uh, the consumer, in our case, cannot affect market clearing outcomes based on its own strategy. So it means that uh, the future market prices uh, are kind of parameters for, for the price taker large consumer, because whatever the procurement strategy of the large consumer is, the future prices are, are kind of parameters and will not be affected by the strategy of the large consumer, okay? This is the definition of a price taker agent. So it's not the case of this lecture, but if you would like to know what the other type of the agents exist in power uh, markets, they are price makers and price makers are comparatively big uh, uh, market participants. For example, in terms of uh, production they can uh, produce or in terms of uh, loads they are gonna consume. 
And based on their strategy, they can affect the market clearing outcomes. We call them price makers. But in this lecture, we specifically consider large consumers with elastic loads, and this large consumer is price taker. Okay? So when we would like to have a uh, develop a uh, procurement strategy for the large consumer, the first things as the input data we need to have is future market prices. So future market prices are the input data for our uh, decision making tool that we would like to develop. And of course, the future market prices, how can we have them by forecasting? So we need uh, forecasting tools to know, to estimate, to forecast the future market prices. And when I say the future prices, I'm talking about the prices of, for example, day head market in the coming hours, for the coming day, okay? But how to forecast the future prices? It's something outside the scope of this lecture. We are just assuming that the future market prices as the forecast prices are exogenous. They are parameters, input data for our decision-making tool, okay? So we have this tool as input data. We would like to plug in this data to our decision-making tool that we would like to develop it in this lecture, okay? So this tool uh, is kind of black box. Right now it's pink box for us. We would like to develop uh, this, this decision-making tool mathematically. So what will be our outcomes of this decision-making tool for finding the optimal procurement strategy of the large consumer? The outputs will be the procurement strategy. And when we say the procurement strategy, we are talking about the bidding pairs. What are the bidding pairs? They are the pairs of quantity and price. It means that the large consumer, how much power uh, it needs and at what price he, I mean, the large consumer likes to bid, okay? So in terms of the price taker agent, the price, the bidding price is the same as our future market price forecasts. So for us, the bidding price in this kind of simplistic setup is just parameter, the same as future market price that we forecasted. But what is the variable or the main output of this decision-making tool is the quantity. So it means that at, uh, for each uh, future market price, how much the large consumer would like to buy electricity at each hour. Okay? Good. Let's start with a very, very simple illustrative example. Uh, let us consider a large consumer with only single elastic load. And uh, regarding the future time period, let's assume only the four hours. Hours one to hour four. Okay? It's just an illustrative example. So, let's assume that we can perfectly forecast the future prices in the next four hours. It means that our forecasts are deterministic. We have a perfect knowledge about the future market prices in the next four hours. And in our case, in our illustrative example, we assume that the market price in the coming first hour is $55 per megawatt hour. It's our forecast. And this price for the next three hours, hours two, three, four, they are respectively 60, 65, and $70 per megawatt hour. So as I explained before, they are input data for our decision-making tool. Okay, good. Okay, we also need the utility function of the large consumer at each upcoming hour. What does it mean, the utility function? Utility function, its uh, y-axis is the utility price. 
it's dollars per megawatt hour, uh, while uh, the x-axis is the quantity. And it could be, for example, just one block, or in this case, it's two blocks. So each of these pieces is a block, let's call it demand block, and this example for our one, we have two demand blocks. What does it say? For example, the first block, it says that the large consumer is willing to buy at most 200 megawatt power at the price of maximum $75 per megawatt hour. So at any price equal to 75 or below that, the uh, large consumer likes to buy electricity, likes to supply the first block, okay? About the second block, let's assume that it's a less important demand part for the large consumer, whose quantity is just 10 megawatt, so it's from 200 to 210, so its size is only 10 megawatt, but uh, the large consumer to be supplied uh, the second block only is willing to pay at most $20 per megawatt hour. So this function that we call it utility function shows how much power the large consumer needs and up to what price uh, the large consumer can pay for that, okay? So this is also the input parameters for our decision-making tool. Again, we have this utility function because our large consumer is elastic, okay? So we need one utility function per hour. And since we have four hours in our illustrative example, so we have four utility functions for hour one, hour two, hour three, and our four. Okay? Good. What else we, we have, as I explained you before, we also have the forecast prices. As I told you before, for example, our forecast price for hour one is $55 per megawatt hour, shown by this blue dashed line. Okay? And we have the same forecast or similar forecast with different prices for the next uh, hours. So, I think now it's trivial in this illustrative example which part of the demand or which demand block at each hour will be supplied, will be accepted in the market to be supplied, and which demand block will be rejected from the market. Yes, so the demand blocks whose price whose utility price is above the forecast price, we can expect that it will be accepted from the market, as far as we assume that our forecast is perfect, right? But the demand block, I mean the second demand block, whose utility price is lower than the forecast price, okay, we can assume that it will be rejected from the market, right? Good. So we can assume that in this illustrative example, we can understand that uh, this, uh, the first uh, blocks in all hours will be supplied while the, the, the second uh, uh, demand blocks in all hours will be uh, non-served, will be out of the market and uh, no way for them to be supplied in the market. So based on in this simple illustrative example, we can say that the procurement strategy of the large consumer is to, to buy or to bid for 200 megawatt in hour one at the forecast price equal to $50 per megawatt hour. It's exactly the demand block, the first demand blocks at each hour, which is above the forecast price. Okay? Good. Or in hour two, uh, the large consumer bids 250 megawatt at the forecast market price, $60 per megawatt hour. Good. Now let's uh, calculate the total procured energy of the large consumer during over the four hours. 
is 200 plus 250 plus 225 plus 275 whose summation is 950 megawatt hour. So this is the total procured energy that the large uh, consumer expects to buy from the market over the four hours. But how much will be the benefit, the utility of the large consumer over the four hours if the large consumer manages to buy these powers in all hours? Let's calculate it. So for the first hour, the large consumer is going to buy 200 megawatt, while in that hour, for that demand block, its uh, utility price is 75. It shows the value of electricity for that consumer in that hour, while the market price is 55. So for each megawatt, its benefit in the first hour is 75 minus 55 equal to $20. And since the large consumer buys 200 in the first hour, so it's 200 times 20 is the benefit of the large consumer in the first hour. And if we calculate the same for all hours, at the end, the total utility that we expect that the large consumer will have is $19,000, okay? Good. So now let's try to model this problem mathematically, okay? So we can write an optimization problem, a linear optimization problem whose objective function is utility maximization of the large consumer and its only variable is the procured energy at each hour for each demand block, okay? So, we can define some parameters and some variables. So, let's assume that the T is the index for hours, K is index for demand blocks, so the capital U with the indexes of T and K uh, since it's uh, a capital here in this notation, they shows parameters and it shows the utility of the demand block K at our T. It's exactly the Y axis of the utility functions at each hour. We have another uh, uh, parameter in black. It's P max with the indices of T and K shows the maximum power or maximum demand of block K at our T. It's exactly the X axis of the hourly utility functions. So lambda with uh, index T shows, again, it's a parameter, it's in black, and it shows the forecast, our forecast for future market, uh, for future hours uh, uh, of the market, the market price at time T. The only symbol in red, it shows our variable, which is P, the lowercase p, with the indices of T and K that shows the procured power of the large consumer for block K at time T, at our T, okay? So based on these symbols, again, the red one shows the variable, and also in the optimization problem, the, 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 the red variable is, is the procured energy, while the all uh, black symbols, they are parameters. Our objective function is utility maximization for all demand blocks and for all hours. And we try to maximize our utility, which is the procured energy as a variable times the difference of utility price as parameter minus the forecast price as a parameter. Okay, this is the objective function. Subject to, we have only in this case one constraint per block and per time, and it says that it bounds our variable, our variable procured energy at each time should be non-negative, and it's restricted, it's bounded to maximum uh, demand of each block at each time, okay? This is a linear problem, very easy to solve, and uh, just for exercise, 
you can try to solve the illustrative example we have using this uh, uh, optimization problem either manually or you can easily uh, simulate it uh, or uh, model it in any uh, optimization software, I don't know, like Python, like GAMS, or whatever that you like and you prefer. Okay, let's uh, make the problem, the problem we had, a little more complicated. Let's add more constraints and let's uh, make it more close to reality. One of the potential constraints, the extra potential constraints that a large consumer may have is the minimum total energy to procure over the whole time period. For example, in, in our case, we assume that the large consumer should buy in all four hours at least 970 megawatt hour energy. It's, it's a constraint and please note that it's an intertemporal constraint because it's not a constraint for a single hour or for different hours, but it, it's, it's a constraint connecting all hours together. It says that my procured, by my procured power in hour one plus the one in hour two plus the hour three plus the one in hour uh, three, four, sorry, all of them together should be more than equal to or greater than 970. So if we like to write it uh, in our mathematically in our optimization problem is the last constraint that we just added and it says that the total procured power in all hours for all demand should be greater than or equal to 970. Good. So now we are making our problem a little more uh, complicated and maybe, okay, it's a bit harder to solve manually. Maybe you need to go for uh, software uh, optimization to solve it. Let's make it even more complicated and let's add another constraint, ramping constraint. Ramping constraint, again, it's intertemporal constraint, means that it links the hours together. This ramping constraint in this illustrative example says that our consumption, our total consumption in our edge with respect to the previous hour should not be increased or decreased more than 45 megawatt. So this way we are restricting the change of total power, power consumption at each hour with respect to that in the previous hour. Okay, so how to model this ramping constraint? You can, you, you can think a little about this, but uh, I, I like to show how we can uh, model this ramping constraint in a mathematical form as a constraint of our optimization problem. It's the last one. So we can say that now we have some operator only on K. So it says that the total production, sorry, the total consumption of the large consumer in time T minus the same, but in our T minus one. So this change, this uh, difference should be lower than or equal to 45 and should be higher than or equal to minus 45. So the right hand side constraint shows the ramp up constraint while the other one shows the ramp down constraints. And here in this illustrative example, we assume that the ramping up and down, they have the same values, 45 megawatt hour, 45 megawatt, but it could be anything, uh, it could be different perhaps in a different illustrative examples.